Hey guys, it's John P. Welcome to my garage. I'm gonna give you a complete tour of the dust collection system today. Welcome to Geek Beat. You know, gang, if there's one thing I like, it's breathing. And uh, I do have allergy problems. Plus, it's just not healthy to be working in a shop that doesn't have adequate dust collection in place. So, I decided I wanna build something for my shop, but I really had a lot of difficulty piecing everything together. So I thought it'd be useful to share with you what I learned by doing this. So Carter and I are gonna be using the dual camera situation here, and we're gonna walk you through the whole thing so that you know all the different components I used. Even though I know every garage is a little different, I think you can still apply the same principles all around. So first, let's start off with the actual pipes that I installed for the dust collection. What you're looking at is actually Schedule 40, four inch PVC, and it runs the length of my garage almost, and uh, is mounted to the ceiling and the walls with these little custom made mounts that I've got here. Now, one of the challenges that I had, you know, building a PVC pipe system Anybody can do that, it's not a big deal. This stuff comes from Home Depot or Lowe's. It's about 10 to $15 for a $10, um, sorry, for a 10 foot long section. Not a big deal. Now, you do have to piece out the connectors and you'll notice that, for example, we've got coming off the straight pipe at the top, we've got a piece that has, it's called a Y and it comes down at a 45 degree angle and then goes into another 45 degree connector. You might say, now why not just use a 90 degree, a single 90 degree connector? Well, the reason why is we're trying not to slow down the air that's being sucked through. And if you shove it through a 90 degree turn instead of two gentler turns, you, you really put a lot more restriction on the system. So, Everywhere possible, that's the first thing you'll learn, is you wanna make the curves gentle as opposed to very sharp. Now, there was one situation I'll show you later where I couldn't do that, or I could've, but it just wasn't worth it. So I did use a 90 degree elbow there. But here, two 45s spaced apart, and all you do is you take a little section of of the pipe and you shove it in there in between them. Now, one of the other things you might think about is if you were doing plumbing work, you would be using glue all around these pipes and connectors to put them together. And when you do, it's permanent, it's watertight and everything else. I did not do that here. All of these pipes are dry fitted. They just basically are shoved together as tight as I could get them and, left, and just leave them there because it's good enough for the airflow. That's really all you need. Now, what, where we ran into problems was coming out of this straight Schedule 40 pipe and trying to adapt it to this suction motor over here. Let's take a look. Okay, a few things to know. First of all, this is a little section of that Schedule 40 pipe. You'll know you found it when, when you see four inch SCH 40 somewhere on it, Schedule 40. It's the standard stuff you get at all the home improvement stores. And if you look at it, it's got a one quarter inch thick uh, wall. Now, one other thing to be aware of is there are two different types of this pipe. Um, this one is a cellular core. It's a lighter version. If you go to the store and you find two different PVC pipes and they have different prices, pick them up. And the one that's a lot heavier, leave that one behind. Use the lighter one. This is basically a softer material and uh, it's going to be a lot less weight to move and you just don't need to pay for that heavy stuff. So the thickness of this wall and the diameter, both interior and exterior, makes it a challenge for fitment to standard dust collection systems. Let me show you what I mean. This is a kind of a fairly standard connector here, and you'll see I can't get it inside, and it won't go outside. There's, there's just no way to connect these two. And so what you have to do is you have to look for specific pieces that will work. I happen to find this four inch splice. 
and this thing will go right inside the tube. Now, challenge is how to secure it. This splice is actually made to work with these kinds of flex tubing. And so you take the flex tube and you kind of stretch it around the outside of this, and then you use a connector. You've probably seen these before, a little pipe connector that you put around the outside and then you just screw it in. Now, they also make this kind, which I prefer dramatically, because you don't need a screwdriver, you just use your finger to tighten it up. And on this side, it has a specific little ridge that when you put it over the pipe, that will fit right down on the ridge and go around in between the two different um, rings in these reinforced pipes. So you might look for these, they're not very expensive. By the way, every one of these parts that we're going over, I'll have in the show notes, and so look for the link. I've got links to all of these so you don't have to hunt them down, especially because some of them look very much alike, but they're not. So for example, these two connectors look like they're a lot alike, but one is a, you know, uh, angled and one is straight. However, if we stick this inside the PVC, you notice it, it's very loose. So that's one of the problems you get into is which exact pieces will fit with the piping. Let's head over here and take a look at how they connect. Okay, the heart of our dust collection system is this three quarter horsepower wall hanging rockler uh, system. Now, I have actually seen these with different brand names. I don't know if they all come out of the same factory or if they are actually different, but we're gonna take a look at this one because it's the one they had at the store and I trusted it. They had it on dis display and everything else. Now, the way this thing works is there is an intake on one side and there is an exhaust that goes into a bag. This particular bag that I have is actually a, an aftermarket bag. The one that this system comes with for about $250, the bag is only capable of filtering down to 20 microns. However, things that go down to let's say one micron or submicron can be really harmful for your lungs. So that bag was not good enough. This extra aftermarket bag was about $30 and it goes down to five microns. So I feel a lot better about capturing the dust at five microns on the first kind of pass, and we'll get to that in a minute. Now, you're gonna notice that the intake on this one is doing something funny. It's coming out of this R2-D2 looking trash can. That's because I basically converted what was otherwise a single stage system into a dual stage system. And I'm gonna demonstrate for you in a minute how that works. But the theory is this. We plug in our devices along the piping, and when the piping comes back, it runs first through the trash can, and then it comes in the trash can, and then it goes out through the dust collector so that most of the heavier materials will drop into the trash can, and that means we don't have to empty this bag as often. All right, let's see it in action. So I ran these ports over to the, other, to the center of my garage so that I could do things like use this saw right here in the middle of the garage and still be able to capture the dust. That's why I have this blast gate mounted here. Now you're gonna notice that what this thing does is it actually closes which seals off that port and allows the suction to go to other ports. Now, the interesting thing is, notice what I had to do to get it to stay there. Because it doesn't want to naturally fit, I actually drilled little holes, I drilled little pre-hole pilot holes, and then I used small screws to hold it in place. Now, not only did I do that, but on the bottom, I also used a special kind of quick disconnect, and you'll notice it's got a little groove here, and that's because the hose that I'm using also has a little adapter on it so that when we stick it in there, we give it a twist, it stays in place. Now, I had to do that because none of the other quick connectors I could find would work well when they were hanging from the ceiling. But 
I wanted this to be able to hang from the ceiling because on the other end, you'll see there's a handle with a special little attachment using one of those quick connect hose clamps. And this allows me to take it and push it right onto an adapter on this saw and bingo, the whole thing has been connected to a four inch dust collection system. Okay, turning on the saw would be a little too noisy, so instead what we're gonna do is demonstrate how well this thing will suck and how the, the two stage filtration system works with these little electrical connectors. All right, time to fire it up. This will give you guys an idea of what it sounds like. It's not loud. I mean, I'm talking a little louder than I was a minute ago, and I'll get closer so the microphone here picks up. When you're right nearby, you definitely hear it, but in a big garage, not so much. So when we come all the way over here, we made sure that all of our other blast gates are closed because that particular system is not really strong enough to suck through all the outlets simultaneously. So right now, this is the only one that's open. Let's see how this thing sucks. All right, it probably wasn't designed for sucking up perfectly good electrical connectors, but let's see where they went. They should have all dropped right into our first primary stage of the dust collection, and I'm gonna show you how this works now that we're opening it up. But let's take a look inside. Up oh, there they are. Okay, so the primary thing to consider with this first stage of collection is I wanted to use a standard Rubbermaid trash can, especially because they have the little rolling wheels down there, makes it super convenient. However, it presented a whole nother challenge because there are no lid things that will connect to these natively. So you'll see what I did was I hacked it into place. I took a jigsaw and I cut these grooves out to adapt this top that normally fits a metal trash can onto this Rubbermaid trash can. Now, in order to get them to get fit together, and by the way, the top is, just happens to be the right size, it's exactly the same width or diameter as this lid, but in order to get a perfectly good seal on it, what I did was I used Gorilla Glue to glue the top to it. Now, Turns out that has only partially worked. It gave me a pretty good seal, but the Gorilla Glue is so inflexible that you'll see it's kind of splitting apart. So that's not gonna be a good long-term fit. I have to redo that and maybe bolt it together and use something else. Here's what I did on the inside, however. In order to make sure that this thing fits onto the trash can, I used a little bit of weather stripping that is actually marine automotive grade weather stripping so that when this sits down on the trash can, there's a good seal and it's actually, even though I can lift up on it easily now, when we turn the system on, you can just pick the whole thing up because of the suction alone. So I've got to fix that little problem with the seal between this piece and this piece. Other than that, it works well. And I've got the link for this unit. Uh, it's about $30 on the show notes as well. Okay, a few last little notes on some of the accessories. First of all, how I mounted those pipes. You can see a little better close up that it's kind of a square mounting bracket made of wood, and here's what it looks like in pieces. What I did was I took a standard two by six piece of wood, a board, and I chopped it into pieces that were about seven or eight inches long. And then I used a four inch hole saw to just cut the hole right in the middle and then sliced it down the middle to turn it into two pieces so that the bottom piece can be first mounted to the wall and then the pipe fitted in place and the top piece mounted on top of it. The way that these are attached is just simply with some really long screws. These are about three and a half inch screws, but it's very important to drill a pilot hole first, otherwise you risk cracking this piece. So pilot hole, then screw, and that's all you need to do. Also, use some really heavy duty sheetrock anchors or 
find studs to mount these so that you don't have any risk of the thing falling down. Now in a situation like this grinder I have here, I want to be able to capture the dust and I found this big kind of dust bin collection hood thing which I also was able to connect to a special clamp. Now you see I just use a standard little work support and I clamped it to it but when I put it in place right down here it's going to capture all the dust coming off that machine and then it's going to feed it right into this four inch suction hose which will connect over here. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. I might want to permanently do it and if so I can use this flex tubing and I can run it straight from here and by the way notice that's a, one of those blast gates. It just opens and closes. Very simple. I could run this straight from here to that but the thing is then I lose the ability to move this around and really I want to make sure that this piece is portable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of those quick disconnects and a piece of hose that can be rapidly inserted and removed so I can move this little thing around the shop. If you wanted to do things more permanently, keep in mind that they also make these screw-in adapters which don't require the clamps. You basically just feed this in and the threads here match the spiraling on the tube and so that gives you a very easy to use uh, quick disconnect. This is actually called a threaded dust fitting and if we wanted to this will snap right on to one of those and you see how it stays there but I find that it's not real stable. It comes off too easily and I like the one that has a little groove in it. So. That's about it for this tour of the shop. I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, if you have uh, any questions about the dust collection system, let me know. Drop a comment below. Uh, again, I'll have all the show notes there and all the links to the various products so you don't have to go and do all the experimentation that I did to get these things to fit together. I'm John P. See you later. Oh my god, I almost forgot except Carter reminded me that I didn't talk about these. Check it out. This is a Win air filter system. These cost oh about $160 each and this is the second part that really helps clean the air. So as we talked about with the primary dust collector, it will filter down to about 5 microns but it's only capturing as much as it can from some source like that saw which is going to be spitting dust everywhere. After we're done and we've cleaned everything up, I rely on these to really scrub the air. Now, they're remote controllable and they have two different functions. First of all, I can hit the on button and it will turn it on to different speeds, low, medium, high. And even on high, it's not terribly loud. I've got two of these, one mounted on each side of the garage. But there's also the timer. So what I like to do is you hit it once for an hour, twice for two, and again for four hours. I'll turn that on for four hours, leave the doors closed, go away, and when by the time I come back, those two things will really scrub the air. And this is about 1,200 square feet of garage space. So two of those, maybe one if you have a smaller space, and that will take your dust management down to uh, breathable levels. Okay, guys, that's really it this time. I'm out of here.